So in this video, I'm going to talk about something called the distributive property. So the distributive property is something that we can use to be able to simplify expressions. So let's say that we had something that looks like this, an expression where 4 plus 5 is in the parentheses and all of that is going to be multiplied against 2. So PEMDAS says we do the P of parentheses first, 4 plus 5 is 9, and 9 times 2 is 18. So this expression is equal to 18. I'm going to show you that you can get the exact same result using the distributive method. The distributive method says that you're going to multiply whatever's on the outside, in this case 2, times everything individually that's on the inside. So 2 is going to be multiplied by 4, and then 2 is going to be multiplied by 5. So whatever operation is going to be done inside the parentheses, we're also going to bring down as well. So 2 times 4 is 8. We have an addition sign there. We'll keep our addition sign down here. And then 2 times 5 is 10. And 8 plus 10 is also 18. So we get exactly the same answer as we did if we had done pure PEMDAS. Let's say that we had a negative in here. Let's say we had a subtraction sign, 4 minus 5. Okay, again, we do up in parentheses, 4 minus 5 is negative 1. So then we multiply negative 1 times 2, that's negative 2. So this expression that I have right here is equal to negative 2. Let's see if the distributive property also gives that, that same answer. So 2 times 4 is going to be 8. Then whatever the operation is in here, you just bring it down. So we bring down the subtraction sign. And then 2 times 5 is 10. 8 minus 10 is also negative 2. That's exactly what we got if we had done the PEMDAS uh, way to go about things. We get the exact same answer. Okay, so um, let's say that we had something that looks like 4 plus 5 in the parentheses, and then we have a negative 2 on the outside. Okay, so if we use PEMDAS, we go with 4 plus 5 first, that's 9, and then 9 times negative 2, negative 18. Let's see if we get negative 18 using the distributive method as well. Okay, so negative 2 times 4 is a negative 8. Then whatever operation we have in here, we bring it down. Here's a plus. And then negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Lo and behold, negative 8 plus negative 10 is also negative 18. So either way, we get negative 18. The distributive property is a very powerful method that we can use to simplify expressions. Um, and while it can um, also, we could also use PEMDAS. We can also use the distributive method to get the exact same results. Okay, so what if we had some variables in here? Okay, what if we had 4x plus 5 inside, inside the parentheses, and then we had 2 multiply the entire parentheses? You notice that 4x and 5 are not like, um, are not like terms. They are unlike terms, so you cannot combine them anymore. Remember 4 and 5, just by themselves, they were constants, and you can add constants together. But since 4 is attached to the x through multiplication, this is as far as you can go. So there's not really much you can do at all, except use the distributive property. So while PEMDAS uh, leaves us here as much as we can do, because because there's nothing else that we can do in PEMDAS, because we need to do what's in parentheses before we multiply, the distributor property is a way for us to keep doing uh, work on the expression and still have it exactly equivalent as if we were to have used PEMDAS in the first place. So we can still do our distribution over everything. 2 times 4x is 8x. Again, here's an addition sign. We still bring it down. And then 2 times 5 is 10. So what I'm saying is 8x plus 10 is an equivalent expression to 2 times, in parentheses, 4x plus 5. These are exactly equal to each other. Both of these lines are exactly the same. Okay? <clears throat> so that's how you can use the distributive property when you have variables. And it's, it totally works. I want to do it now with a negative 2 out front. Okay? So if you have negative 2 out front, you do exactly as we have done the distributive property up to now. And we'll just continue it. So that's negative 2 times 4x, which is going to be negative 8x. Plus, you still bring down this, this plus sign, because it's inside the parentheses. And then negative 2 times 5 is going to be negative 10. OK? So you may have seen up to this point. So first of all, this is absolutely fantastic, 100% on a quiz or test. I also want to let you know that sometimes if you see a plus negative, 
some people will write it just as one subtraction sign. So I want to go over why that's true again. So I want you to know that it's more likely than not that you will see this expression represented as this expression. They mean the exact same thing. Both of these mean the exact same thing. They are absolute equivalents, and you could give either one of these on a quiz or a test and you would get the same amount of points. Absolutely correct. Why do these mean the same exact thing? Let's just go back to five minus three. So five minus three is two, and if I make this subtraction sign into adding a negative three, five plus negative three is also positive two. So do you see that the subtraction sign, the subtraction sign is equivalent to adding a negative, okay? So feel free to, um, if uh, something looks a little complicated in order to, uh, to try to combine, always remember that if you want to uh, make it a, maybe a little bit more visually understandable, you can always turn a subtraction sign into a plus minus. And we're gonna use that skill in this distribution problem. Okay, so let's say that we have, um, let's say that we have negative two times four x minus five. Okay, so let's go about that. We're gonna distribute, distribute. So negative two times four x is negative eight x. And then remember how I said we bring down the subtraction sign, because there's a subtraction sign here, but then there's this negative two, and then you're gonna multiply negative two times five, and is that gonna be like a negative 10, a negative, negative 10? It gets a little complicated. So before, um, for the next few days or weeks, why don't we just do this to sort of familiarize ourselves with this process? Whenever you see a subtraction sign, I highly suggest that you turn it into a plus negative, okay? As I said before, that is absolutely fine. You can do that. Now, when we go through the same operations, it's gonna be a lot more straightforward. So this is a technique that I would use until you get more comfortable and then you don't need to do the plus negative anymore. Okay, continuing, negative two plus, uh, times four x is negative eight x. We still bring that, now we can absolutely, without a doubt, bring down this operation of a plus right here. And now do you see that we're, it's very clear that we're multiplying negative two times negative five. Negative two times negative five is a positive 10, and we write that positive 10 here. So it just makes it more clear as to what we're doing until you get more familiar. I highly suggest that you use this approach um, for, the, you know, for the outset of doing these. Okay, let's do another one. Let's say, um, let's say that we had negative one times three x minus six, okay? So here we have negative one on the outside. Again, it would be awesome if we could use PEMDAS right off the bat and combine these. The thing is we can't because these are not like terms. So that's why the distributive property is so powerful because we still can do stuff even though we can't actually carry out the mission of what PEMDAS was saying in the first place. Okay, so what are we gonna do in this case since we're just starting out? We're gonna take the subtraction sign, we're gonna turn it into a plus negative. Okay, now when we distribute this negative one over everything, it's gonna be just a lot easier to keep track of our signs. So negative one times three x is gonna be negative three x. We take down this plus sign, just as it was inside the parentheses, and then negative one times negative six, negative times negative, so positive, one times six is six, so here we go. Negative three x plus six, this is our answer. This is an equivalent statement of this expression, and so we have carried out our distributive property faithfully, and it's absolutely um, equivalent statements. Okay, so what I'd also like to say is this. A lot of times, you're not gonna see this negative one out in front, okay, if there is a negative one. So just going back to maybe something we've done previously, if we have x, okay, if we have x, there's no coefficient in front of x. If there's no coefficient that's an explicit coefficient, meaning something that you can actually see, there's no coefficient in front of the x, we can assume that it's one, always. If we had y squared and there was no coefficient in front of the y squared, we could assume that was a one, okay? 
Um, likewise, likewise, if we had a negative x, okay, we could, if we wanted to, put in this little one here. So it would be negative 1x. You could think of it as like a ghost one, okay? You can't see it, but it's there, all right? So if we had negative y squared, if it helps you, you could put in a little 1 here, negative 1 y squared. They mean the exact same thing. So what I'm trying to say is a lot of times you're not going to see this 1 here at all. In fact, you're going to be given just the parentheses, and outside the parentheses, you're going to have... A, a, a negative out there. And now you're going to be asked to um, remove the, uh, the parentheses signs. So how are you going to be able to remove the parentheses signs? You remove the parentheses signs only after you have done the distributive property. So we're going to what we call distribute the negative. Okay, so we're going to distribute this negative over this term as well as this term. You distribute over as many terms as that uh, are in the parentheses. Probably for the next uh, example, I'll give three terms. It doesn't matter. You could have 20, 30, 80 terms inside the parentheses. This um, negative and whatever numbers attached to it needs to, be a, needs to be distributed to every single thing. Okay, so negative, ah, but saying negative times 3x is just a little bit um, sometimes difficult to comprehend, which is why I suggest you actually visualize that ghost one that was in there the whole time, just like there were these ghost ones over here. So if it helps you multiply uh, by thinking of it as, as negative one times three x, negative one times the negative six, then go for it, okay? I just want you to know that in the problems, you're not gonna have that one, and if it helps you to think of having that one, you're gonna have to put it in yourself, okay? All right, great. So those are the things that I wanted to talk about the distributive property, and I think you'll find it's a very powerful technique to, uh, to simplify and reduce down expressions. And I'll give you a couple minutes um, to do your own problems about this. Thanks.